when I started college algebra, one of the things I didn't know was a set. So let's start there. Sets are a collection of similar objects. So here I have the digits 1 through 9. We can use this set D equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and pretend that's closed. So here we're seeing D is a set of these numbers. I've collected these numbers. All of these digits, of course, separated by comma, these are all elements. So these are all elements of the set D. And notice that I put everything that was in this set, all these digits. So this is called the roster method, like you would have a roster for classes. It has everybody's name on it. Here I'm listing all my elements for D. So this is the roster notation. Or roster sets. Okay. I could have also done this. I could have said D is the set X. So I'm just saying, I'm holding the place of the variable, the set x such that, this means such that, x is a digit. So instead of making a roster, writing everything out, I could just go ahead and say it like this. And they mean the exact same thing. Okay? This is the one that you're most likely going to be using uh, in your college algebra class. Here's one example of how to translate it. We can say the set E is a set X such that X is an even digit. Okay. Pretend that fit again. So here, this is what we're saying. If I use roster notation, I can say two, four, six, eight. Those are my even digits. Here I can use the set O is the set X such that X is an odd digit. Okay, so what am I saying using roster notation? Well, we know that it's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay? Right. Here, when we classify numbers, uh, we're only going to look at the reals for right now, real numbers. We classify them into either rational or irrational. Okay? So, what makes them different? Well, rational numbers can be written as fractions. Okay? So, the numbers 2, for example, well, it's not a fraction right now, but it can be written as a fraction. It can be written as 2 over 1, okay? So that can be written as A over B, which is the way you're going to start looking at things. So here we have fractions, um, 7 over 9. There, we have a fraction, okay? Not a big deal. Irrationals, though, I can't write those as a fraction. For example, you know some of these pi. Okay, pi, I can't write that as a fraction. Or e, not a fraction, those are irrational. And their decimals don't, don't repeat after decimal. There's no pattern, there's no set pattern. So because there's no set pattern, I can't write it as a fraction. Therefore, I can't say that these numbers are rational. Oh, by the way, this does include positives and negatives. Okay, so positive and negative fractions and you're good. The next ones you have are from the rational. We don't keep going here anymore. From the rational side, we split those into two. We have integers and fractions. Okay, so fractions, you, you already know all of those. 3 over 4, 5 
five over seven, no big deal. Now, still including positives or negatives. Okay? Integers, those are your counting numbers. So let's say negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, blah, blah, blah. Now, yes, you can write these as fractions, but anything that's just over one doesn't, won't count uh, when you're classifying the numbers. You'll just say that it's an integer. Okay. Now, breaking up the integers, you have whole numbers and negative whole numbers. So here's where you get your positive and your negatives. Let's write it in set. Here we can say this is the set 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Okay, and here we would have the set negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Okay, the last breakup is right here. You're going to have your counting numbers and 0. Okay, just, just think about when you're learning how to count. You started off counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, same thing here. Our set is 1, 2, 3, so on, and 0 is just 0. There. Okay, so this is how I do these problems. Let's say they gave you the number. 10 and they ask you to classify it. We'll start off in the, at the top right here with rational and irrational. Well, rational, that means that I can make a ratio. I can put it either as a, as a fraction that I see already or I can put it over 1. Well, 10 over 1 is the same as 10, so the number 10 is rational. And what I see here is that it's in the top. So that means it's everything down below. That means that the number 10 is also in, it's also rational, an integer, a whole number, and a counting number. There, I didn't even have to check the other ones because I already know that since it's the top, it goes down to the bottom. All right, let's look at another one. What if they gave me the number three over four? Start off with rational or irrational, all right? It's a fraction, it's a ratio, so I know it's rational, okay? Now, I either get to choose the left side or the right side. Now, it's not an integer, it's a fraction. So I go here, and I don't have anything below this, so that's where I stop. There were four, it's, well, all these numbers are real, so this is a real number that's also rational and a fraction. Right. Here we have rounding versus truncating. Um, and usually you don't see this very often, but uh, it is brought up in college algebra sometimes. So if they ask you to round this number to the nearest hundreds, well, I'm gonna go ahead and look at my eight, look at the right side, if it's five or higher, the eight's gonna go up one digit. So if I round to nearest hundreds, this becomes 20.99. If I truncate though, if they ask me to truncate to nearest uh, hundreds, what I'm gonna do is everything after my hundreds place, I'm gonna cut it away. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm not even gonna look at it. So. 20.98 it doesn't change this 8 I didn't have to look at the next person or anything I just went ahead and got rid of everything okay so this is rounding look at the next guy blah 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 see if it goes up truncate you just cut everybody off and just keep what you have okay. a fast way to check if your calculator rounds or truncates is by doing two divided by three. If at the edge of your screen you see a seven, that means that your calculator rounds. If you see that it's just 
it ends with sixes, that means that your calculator truncates. Okay. Remember, your calculator can't do everything, but it'll try to give you the most exact answer. And like I said, it's either going to round or it's going to truncate.